Okay, hello everyone, it is Kira the Book Bella, and today I have my October book haul here. I usually don't do two book hauls this close together, but I was so late on the September one and I wanted to make sure I split, split them up because, you know, good deals and stuff happen. But I actually ended up getting a few books. This is definitely the season for books because all the new beautiful books are coming out. There's so many specialty items out right now as well. And there's just so much beauty being brought into the world. So I'm just going to go ahead and get into the books that I purchased during the month of October. One of the books like that I ended up getting is the Fairy Loot Exclusive Edition of Into the Crooked Pl Place by Alexander Christo. Alexander Christo is also the author of To Kill a Kingdom, which is a Little Mermaid retelling, and I read that last year and really, really thoroughly enjoyed it. What actually ended up attracting me to this book is not only the beautiful cover, look at that beautiful sparkly edges, I guess I should say shiny. Spine is the exact same way. And on the back it says, the realms make monsters of us all, but the really true selling feature of this, like what really drew me to this, because everybody knows who knows I am obsessed with sprayed, stenciled edges, it doesn't matter. <sighs> Look at that. I mean, I loved the author already beforehand, but then I saw this and I was just totally drawn to this. This is something that I would not know how to do myself. So I had to get this because it's just, it's gorgeous and it's beautiful and I'm just so excited. I'm also very excited to read this because I loved To Kill a Kingdom and it's just so much excitement. Last month I also did a book outlet order, but I did not unbox that on camera because there are some gifts in there for uh, some people that I know. So I did not unbox that on camera because I don't want, just in case they're watching this video, I don't want them to know what they got. So I'm just going to show you guys the few things I got to top off the order so I didn't have to pay for shipping. So these purchases were actually inspired by Holly Hart Books because she had done a book outlet unboxing and I wanted to go ahead and get these because they just sounded so really like they just, they just sounded good so um she's more geared towards fantasy so the first book that i got is the gates of stone and in a world of blood and magic a powerful epic fantasy begins an emperor's daughter who will not be denied just before her 16th birthday princess katrina is refused her rightful place as heir to the ice bear throne solely because of her sex determined to regain her inheritance she murders the foreign lord she's been ordered to marry and embarks on a perilous voyage to the lush tropical islands of the lot bazaar in search of the vast wealth and power she needs to claim the empire for herself and i guess it's also about a prince forced to take a stand it sounds like it's from multiple perspectives but it's oh, it just looks really amazing and i love this cover it's just i don't know like there's this cover is just gorgeous and i really love tigers fun fact my chinese zodiac is the year of the tiger so i happen to be very drawn to these animals case in point the other book that I ended up getting is The Song of All by Tina LaCourt Myers. Holly Hart's books actually said that if you were a huge fan of The Whale and the Wolf, sorry, no, The Wolf and the Whale, that's what it was called, um, this would probably be a good book for you because it kind of reminded her of that book. A beautifully realized world, both familiar and strange, with charismatic characters and a rich tapestry of history and a vivid and engrossing debut. The Legacy of Heavens, Book One. May his blade strike glory upon the heavens. May his blade draw the blood of those who call themselves immortals. On the forbidding fringes of the tundra, where years are marked by seasons of snow, humans war with immortals in the name of their shared gods. Irjan, a human warrior, is ruthless and lethal, a legend among the brethren of hunters, but even legends grow tired and disillusioned. Scared and weary of bloodshed, Irjin turns his back on his oath and his calling to hide away and live a peaceful life as a farmer, husband, and father. But his past is not so easily left behind. When an ambitious village priest conspires with the vengeful comrades Irjan has forsaken, the fragile peace in the Northlands of Devania is at stake. His bloody past revealed, Irjin's present unravels as he faces an ultimatum, return to hunt the immortals or lose his child. But with his son's life hanging in the balance, as your John follows the tracks through the dark and desolate snow-covered forest, it is not death he searches for, but life. 
So this sounds so incredible and I can't wait. Like this is the first book in a series. So that was pretty much what I got from that. So this is the last book I believe that I got for myself at Book Outlet. And the main reason I got it was because at bookstores it's usually like 60 bucks. And I've been like looking at it for a while and I've kind of been interested in reading these as well um, eventually. So I figured that this would be the perfect time to just go ahead and pick it up. This is a big book. This is the Books of Earthsea, the complete illustrated edition, Ursula Le Guin. And it's illustrated by Charles Vess. This is a huge, huge, huge book, but it's so gorgeous. I love the illustration of the dragons on the cover of this and they have these beautiful full page illustrations inside the book but this is pretty much a complete collection of Earthsea. Oh, the anti-theft things that usually come in books. I found it in there so we're just gonna go ahead and throw that out but um, this is just such a beautiful book and it actually has one of those um, cloth bookmarks in it as well which is just fabulous but I I really wanted to get this actually like on book outlet it was only like 20 bucks and in comparison to like 60 I mean it was a deal so I definitely wanted to go ahead and get it and I'm really really excited to have this as part of my collection so that I will have the opportunity to start taking into the Earthsea books that I absolutely just I'm just so excited I've heard nothing but great things about the series and I cannot wait to dig into this the next book that I got is The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. This is a science fiction thriller that pretty much all takes place in a cabin and it's got a female female romance but apparently like this is on the edge of your seat kind of book and it's not for people who are claustrophobic but it sounds really amazing. I'm just I'm so excited for this. I just I've been wanting I, ever since I read Dark Matter I've been craving more science fiction thrillers so I heard about this and I ended up buying it for really cheap. Um, on Amazon secondhand. So the next book that I got is actually a graphic novel. It's the V.E. Schwab Shades of Magic Volume 2. I read the first volume and I really enjoyed it. I loved how it was span expanded the universe of a Darker Shade of Magic series and it was such a fun addition into the world kind of to see how Kel and everything progressed you know before Kel existed in this world. So I just I really enjoyed the element of getting to know the world outside of Kel and Lila and this actually takes place with Prince Maxim, who is King Maxim in the Darker Shade of Magic series. So this actually takes place in, in Prince Maxim's youth and how he is kind of like learning how to navigate through worlds. He is really determined to find somebody that can jump worlds. And already you're starting to see how things kind of begin before Darker Shade of Magic and kind of progress into the Darker Shade of Magic series and they do a ton of foreshadowing and how it's just going to kind of just neatly flow together. So I'm really excited to read this. I really love the first one. So I actually do really like classics but they came out with a couple limited edition classics on I found them on Amazon and I saw them all over Instagram as well because they did they were doing some Instagram tours with them and they're just plain out gorgeous and they are actually collectibles. They only make 10 thousand of these per book and I saw a couple that I had classics that I have read before that I adored and I wanted to go ahead and get them. The first one is Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. If you look at this it's actually a stenciled book cover and I just I, I it's just so beautiful and the edges are sprayed like this is the first edition these are the first collection like there's four of them I'm going I'm working on getting the last two because I want to make sure that I collect all of these I love how they all have sprayed edging and actually the, these are really high quality paper as well they don't use like recycled paper they actually use white paper there's also a cloth bookmark in these as well they have actual numbers like like what number you ended up getting out of the 10,000 and they have full page quotes like throughout these book like of the most notable quotes inside of these so there is just so much gorgeousness going on here and I read Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice several years back and I absolutely adored it it has stuck with me since this is like why they call these classics and I adored those books so I'm actually going to be like wanting to get into the less known ones like the ones that I have um, I am less familiar with but this one I have like I had my priorities and I got the ones that I had read first because I love these so much. I ended up also getting the other edition 
which is Emily Bronte's Withering Heights. I had to read this in school, in high school, and I really enjoyed Heathcliff and all, like, this is a, definitely a gothic romance. I've been a huge fan of the Bronte sisters since I can remember, and I really just love all of this, but it's the same thing with that, and then it's got the turquoise, or the blue sprayed edges in here, and then, you know, you have the end papers, like this book belongs to. You also have this numbered as well, so you can kind of see, like, what number this is here. So, and they also have the white papers and the full page quotes as well of the most notable quotes that are in throughout this. So yes, these books are absolutely 100% gorgeous and I am obsessed with them and I love them so much. And all the other books, it looks like they're going to have um, all sprayed edges. This is their winter collection. So I imagine like they're probably gonna be coming out with four new books for every season. And I'm really wanting to try to get, make sure I get all of them because I would love to have a full set of these just because like they are nothing but perfection. The next book that I got is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. This has been going around. I've heard some mix after I ended up buying it. Um, I bought it from Target and I heard a lot of mixed reviews regarding this book. Some people really, 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 really love it and other people have a lot of mixed re felt like it was anticlimactic. So I'm kind of curious to see how I feel about it. This is a 700 page book. It's very thick and it is a thriller and apparently like it is just a very slow burn thriller and it takes a little bit to get into but I love this cover and I'm really excited to be digging into this. Stephen Chbosky is also the same person who wrote, who wrote The Perks of Being a Wallflower who is a, which also received coincidentally a lot of conflicting reviews um but i'm really excited about this i have yet to read perks of being a wallflower but i remember seeing the movie and i loved it so this is going to be uh, i think this i am hoping like that i'm going to really enjoy this but if it's a slow burn sometimes i do have problems with pacing so we'll see how this goes so the next book that i got is ninth house by lee bardugo this is the uk version of ninth house i ended up wanting the uk version the end papers in this are gorgeous this is something that the u.s hardcovers do not have is this um beautiful like snake like exterior and then we have this right here and then the spine like has kind of scale it's kind of scales like a snake I am extremely obsessed with the UK version. I like the US version, but the snake is not nearly as prominent as it is in this. I've actually been kind of drooling over the Waterstones edition too, but I think I kind of want to wait to read th these books first. I started it. I'm not all the way through it yet, and I'm hoping to make sure that I get through it, all of it in December. The next two books I got from my Owl Crate unboxing. I'm still really excited because the books that I got were actually ones that I was really wanting anyway. And so they came out with two d different hardbacks, two exclusive covers for both of them. And the first one is I Hope You Get This Message, which is a science fiction. The, the theme for this box was science fiction. And this is a YA science fiction. And it sounds really amazing. When news stations start reporting that Earth has been contracted by a planet named Alma, the word is abuzz with rumors that the alien entity is giving civilization only a few days before they hit the kill switch. For high school truant Jesse Hewitt, though nothing has ever felt permanent, not the guys he hooks up with, not the jobs his underpaid mom works so hard to hold down, life has dealt him one bad blow after another. So what does it matter if it all ends now? Kate Collins, on the other hand, is desperate to use this time to find the father she's never met, the man she grew up hearing wild stories about, most of which she didn't believe. And then there's Adim Khan. While coding and computer programming have always come easily to him, for forgiveness doesn't. He can't seem to forgive his sister for leaving, even though it's his last chance. With only seven days to face their truths and right their wrongs, Jesse, Kate, and Adim's paths collide even as their roles are pulled apart. So this has got LGBTQ plus rep. It's like an end of the world kind of thing about last chances to do things like that are really important to you and to make the decision whether or not you want to do them. Bright green is the what makes this unique to the other edition, but this is the Owl Crate exclusive and it's gorgeous and I really wanted to read this so I was really happy that I got this in there. The next book that I got is The Crier's War by Nina Varela. This is another science fiction. This is female-female instead of male-male like the other book was, and this is also a science fiction book. One mortal, one maid, one love, one betrayed. And this cover is beautiful. This has actually got more blue tones, whereas the original cover has more silver and gold tones. 
but it's still just as beautiful, exactly the same, except it has the blue tones in it, and I love it. It's so gorgeous. I love these Owl Crate exclusive editions, and they just make me so happy. They're like, they come out with such beautiful books. The next book that I got is The, St the Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Juana Petrus. I first saw this book on YA Book of the Month, and I have been drooling over ever since. It's got a female-female romance. The people that have read this have absolutely loved it. So I'm really excited to see how I feel about this. Like, I love deep, compelling, like, romance books. I'm just, I'm super excited. Port of Spain, Trinidad. 16-year-old Audrey is heartbroken, having just found out she's going to live in America with her father because her mother caught her with her secret girlfriend, the pastor's granddaughter. Audrey's grandmother, a dancer who drives a white convertible Mercedes and has a few secrets of her own, reassures Audrey that she won't lose her roots, not even in some place called Minneapolis. America have day spirits too, believe me, she tells Audrey. Minneapolis, USA. 16-year-old Mabel is staring at a picture of Whitney Houston, trying to figure out why she feels the way she feels about her ex, Terrell, about her girl, Jada, and that moment they had in the woods, and about the vague feeling of illness that plagued her all summer. Mabel's reverie is cut short when her dad announces that a friend and his just-arrived-from-Trinidad daughter are coming for dinner. Mabel falls hard and fast for Audrey, and she's determined to help Audrey find her way back to America. Never an easy thing for a black girl, as she knows, but their romance takes a turn when test results reveal exactly why Mabel has been feeling low-key sick all summer. Suddenly, it's Audra who's must care for Mabel as she faces a deeply uncertain future. Though it sounds like this is probably going to be kind of a very heavy romance book because, you know, obviously, like, there's an illness in here that we don't know of. Like, they don't really explicitly say it. But I'm kind of curious, so this should be interesting. I really want to get to that one as well very soon. Like I said, I hope to be doing theme months, like, come the um, new year. So if you guys are interested in participating in those theme months, let me know because I will let you guys know what theme months I am planning and I will let you know in advance. So the next book that I got is The Never Tilting World by Rin Chepeco. This is the author of The Bone Witch and this is another one that I was very excited about because this is also a science fiction. I ended up getting quite a few science fictions this month, which is just great because I've actually been craving some science fiction. Not just because of that Blake Crouch book that I read, Dark Matter, but I mean, I just want to dive into more science fiction. This is the first in a series. I don't know how quickly I'm going to end up getting to this one because it is the first in a series and there's other completed series that I want to get to first, but I wanted to have this because I love the cover. It's just gorgeous. This is another beauty like that I'm just really, really obsessed with. A world split between day and night. Remarkable in beauty and fearsome in power, generations of twin goddesses have long ruled Eon. Until 17 years ago, when one sister's betrayal defied an ancient prophecy that split her, the world in two. Planets ceased to spin, and three quarters of the world perished. Now a great abyss divides the planet, one side cloaked in perpetual night, the other scorched beneath an unrelenting sun. While one sister rules Aranth, a frozen city surrounded by a storm-wracked sea, her twin inhabits a sand-locked golden city. Each goddess has raised a daughter, and each goddess keeps her own secrets about the past. But when spectral forces summon those daughters to the site of the breaking, the Chi Young goddesses, along with a powerful healer from Anarath, a mouthy desert scavenger, set out on separate journeys across treacherous wastelands, desperate to heal their broken world, no matter the sacrifice it demands. The next book that I got, I ended up getting volume two of Fruit Baskets. I read the first one and I enjoyed it. I think like so far, like with that one, I'm hoping like that more of a storyline develops in here because I feel like that book like was getting it set up and introducing us to all the people that we were going to need to know in the coming books. So I'm really hoping like that we have a more solid storyline in this because I did enjoy that one, but I want consistency, which means consistent storyline. So hopefully I enjoyed that one. Hopefully I enjoyed this one as much as I enjoyed that one and more so. The next book that I got is Robert Jordan's The Eye of the World. This is a really popular fantasy. This is another like one that I've been hoping to get into. This is probably gonna, this is gonna be one of those series that takes me a while because I believe there's like 12 books in this series, but the last three were written by Brandon Sanderson, so how can I not read this series eventually? And considering the fact that it's already complete, like I don't have to worry about waiting for it. I can just pretty much progress from one book to the next and just read one book 
every month. So if I read, if there's 12 books and I read one book every month, then I should be at the end of the series by the end of the year as long as I stick to it. But uh, this is definitely a very popular fantasy and I am super excited to dig into this. I ended up buying all three in hardback of the Infernal Devices, which is Clockwork Princess, Clockwork Prince, and Clockwork Angel. And uh, it, mainly I got them because I wanted all three of these in hardcover. These covers are gorgeous. These are all first editions, and I got the three pack off Amazon for really cheap. I just, I love these. Out of all the books that I've read by Cassandra Clare so far, these are by far and above my favorite series by her. I love Gem and... I just, I love all three of them. I love, I mean, I don't even mind the love triangle in this. Like, it doesn't matter to me because I love all the characters just so much. But I'm just so excited to have these. I eventually do want to do a reread of these. I haven't read these in a couple of years. And these characters have really stuck with me. And I love how it's kind of like a steampunk YA series but it's just it's so much fun it's so good this is the last stack of books that i got and um i ended up getting the whisper man by alex north this it was a book in october that pretty much everybody was reading unfortunately i did not have the opportunity to get to it but i am hoping to get to it soon considering the fact that i seem to fly through thrillers really really quickly most of the reviews on this have been very favorable but there have been a few like people like that were not super crazy about this so i'm really excited to be digging into this book um basically it's about like a exactly like what it sounds like a whisper man um after the sudden death of his wife tom kennedy believes a fresh start will help him and his young son jake heal a new beginning a new house a new town Featherbank, but the town has a dark past. Twenty years ago, a serial killer abducted and murdered five residents until Frank Carter was finally caught. He was nicknamed the Whisper Man, for he would lure his victims out by whispering at their windows at night. Just as Tom and Jake settle into their new home, a young boy vanishes. His disappearance bears an unnerving resemblance to Frank Carter's crimes, reigniting the old rumors that he prayed with an accomplice. Now, detectives Amanda Beck and Pete Willis must find the boy before it is too late, even if that means Pete has to revisit his great foe in prison, the Whisper Man. And then Jake begins acting strangely. He hears a whispering at his window. So, serial killers, on brand. I love them. I don't love what they do. I just think they're interesting. I was kind of inspired. I ended up getting the Kingdom of Souls in the... UK edition last month with the beautiful sprayed stenciled snake edge and so I ended up seeing like this the spine is gorgeous this is the US edition and I felt I mean I just love this so it says I once laughed at stories about demons now I know that one may walk in my shadow and this is about a witch doctor and the portrayal is of a black girl who has to sell portions of herself to get more powerful and she's trying to help her family out. I still have to sit down and read this. I was actually going to use this as my annotated copy because I usually like if I get two different versions of a book I usually have like one that I pick over another like that I highlight and annotate and I believe this is going to be the one that I do that with. A lot of people really seem to have enjoyed this book and I'm really really excited to be digging into this. But not surprising because if I didn't because if I'm buying these books, of course, like I'm going to be excited pretty much about all of these books, right? I enjoyed Lock Every Door by Riley Sanger so much that I decided that I'm going to forgive the fact that I hated Final Girls and I couldn't get into it. And I ended up getting the second book. So Lock Every Door was the third book that she published. The Last Time I Lied is actually slightly higher rated on her on the list of books on Goodreads. And so I decided that I would go ahead and get this. I haven't done it yet, but I am going to be spraying these page edges blue because I sprayed the other ones pink, just like, just to match everything. But I'm really excited because I've heard a lot of really good things about this. This is actually taking place at a camp and um, I guess something weird happens. I, th I think a girl dis is disappeared, is disappeared. What am I doing? One of the girls disappears and um, she, they go back several years later and now she and now like one of the girls is a camp counselor the one that doesn't disappear all this really strange stuff starts happening so it sounds really amazing it sounds really interesting and i'm really excited because um lock every door was a better much better experience like than i had previously thought but this is beautiful cover and actually now like that i've enjoyed lock every door if i end up enjoying like this she's going to end up being like one of my favorite thriller author authors and i think 
being the fact that I'm still fairly new to the thriller genre, that that's going to be a first for me. Like this, if I end up enjoying like this, she will be my first thriller author that I love. Love, and I, by love I mean on a consistent basis. So the last three books that I got are all from Book of the Month, and I got them in the month of October in my book box. And the first box book that I got is Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. This is actually about a black girl who has HIV, and this is also a YA book. It's geared towards young adults. And I first saw this on there, and I read the description, and I was really intrigued because you don't see a lot of rep for people or anyone in general with AIDS, and this kind of talks about her navigating it and her having to deal with other people knowing that she has AIDS. So I really think that this is going to be very eye-opening, and I was very, very curious to see how I felt about it. And out of all the books like that I went through in the month of October, this was definitely like the only YA book that I saw like that I thought was going to be really epic and really amazing. The next book that I got is Ta Nishi Coates, The Water Dancer. And I've heard a lot of good things about this as well. On the back it says, I am here telling the story and not from the grave, not yet, but from the here and now, peering back into another time when we were tasked and close to the earth and close to a power that baffled the scholars and full mocks the quality, a power like our music, like our dance, they cannot grasp because they cannot remember. And so it sounds so magical. I've heard, like I said, I've heard like a lot of good things about this and this has been a, a, around. I've also heard that this is kind of a challenging read as well, but I don't mind challenging reads. I like stuff like that kind of expands my mind and makes me think. So I'm really interested in this as well. The last book that I got from Book of the Month is Fate of the Fallen by Cal Cade. And this book right here is all about chosen trope gone wrong. And what I mean by that is, let's say you had Harry Potter. Harry Potter is supposed to defeat Voldemort, but before he has an opportunity to defeat Voldemort, he dies. So all you have left is the sidekicks, sidekicks, that are now having to figure out how they are going to solve the world's problems. You know, it, it really does flip the chosen one trope on its head. So I'm very curious about this as well. Well guys, that is all of the books that I bought in October. I'm very excited for all of them. They are beautiful works of art that I'm really excited to get to and read. I hope you guys like this video. If you guys like this video, hit the little like, hit subscribe, and hit the little bell icon if you guys want to receive emails every time I post. I am also on Instagram, Twitter, Amazon, and Goodreads. Those links are linked in the description below, and I am actually going to, I'm actually getting to a point in my channel like where I'm also going to be reviewing movies as movies, TV shows, as well as books, so stay tuned for more of that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys again very soon.